I should I hope she can. Hello, Mr. O'Connell. If you would, would you have a seat in this chair right here? No. All right, uh, Mr. O'Connell. Um, I need to know if, uh, uh, since you've been serving as a juror in this case, has anyone approached you that you believe might have been connected to this case in any way? Uh, yes, today. All right. And when did it occur? It occurred just before uh, we were forming a line to come into the jury room initially this afternoon. So for the first time today, yes. you all were lined up and assembled outside the courtroom. Right, or were standing, getting standing. ready to come okay. in. And uh, who was it, or how would you describe the person who uh, approached you? Um, there was a lady who came out of the jury room and... Out of the courtroom? I, excuse me, out of the courtroom. Okay. Um, and she was kind of walking past us and she looked over and uh, made the comment. She said, you're the jury. And I don't believe anybody really acknowledged anything. She says, I'm the, uh, the mother of the defendant or the defendant's mother. Um, uh, did you have any conversation with her? Did you? No. Right. no. Um, and is that, uh, to the best of your recollection, that just every word that she spoke? Yes. All right. And um, how much after that encounter, how much time passed until you all were brought into the courtroom? Just a matter of seconds, really. All right. All right. Now, is there anything about, about that encounter that you think would influence your decision in this case? No, I don't believe so. Okay. Um, so you've not drawn any kind of negative inference or opinion about that? Or you've not drawn even a positive sort of inference about that? No, I don't believe so. So you would say you remain, you're still remaining neutral about this and that had no effect on you? Yes, I believe so. All right, Mr. Price. And this is Ms. O'Connor. O'Connor. Ms. O'Connor. Ms. O'Connor, um, I, I guess the only thing that caught me about your response to the judge was yes. I don't believe so. Uh, and I'm probably looking, I, I'm, I'm interested in uh, making sure that you're certain that mm -hmm. there is no influence one way or the other, positive or negative, that you've been introduced to the defendant's mother. I guess I would answer no. I think I'm, I'm uh, remain neutral. Okay, can you still look at the evidence and decide this case based on the evidence, this, uh, irregardless of the fact that this lady has introduced herself to you as this defendant's mother? Yes. Uh, Mr. Stegmaier. Good afternoon. Is it O'Connor or O'Connell? I'm sorry. O'Connor. O'Connor. Ms. O'Connor. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, what did you think about this whole thing? Anything come into your mind? What was your initial reaction? Um, it just, it surprised me. Okay. I guess took me by surprise. Okay. And you didn't have any negative feelings about it, though? No. It was such a brief, you know, encounter. And okay. Are you um, still able to maintain in your mind that John is innocent now until proven otherwise? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Connor, we're going to, if you would, go Thanks. back around. We've got the... Ms. Callahan, can you have a seat in that chair there? Sure. All right. Um, Ms. Callahan, um, I need to know if, um, if you believe that you have been approached by someone uh, while serving as a juror in this case and that someone might be re somehow associated with this case. Okay, and when did it happen? Before we came in today, for the first time, we were sitting out on these benches out here, and the jurors were talking to each other, and someone came out, I didn't even look up, said, are you the jury? I'm the mother of the defendant. I didn't even look at the person. I just, 
didn't want to have anything to do with them. Right. Um, that was it. Okay, and that happened. Then we came in. Okay, and just I just want to make sure, you know, there was absolutely no question about the facts. So this was, it happened today, and it happened after the deputy had gotten you at the, from the jury pool room and walked you over. You're all assembling outside, uh, waiting to be called in. And before you come in for the first time today, uh, you're on the benches and this occurred. Yes. Is that the whole, every, every word that you can remember that was passed between this person and uh, the jurors? Yes. All right. And did you, re and you didn't respond in any way? I didn't even look up right. to see who was speaking. Okay. Now, we were being called in. Right. So immediately so thereafter, probably on, is it as close to simultaneous, but not exactly? Seconds. All right. Now, then the question becomes, do you uh, believe at this moment, right now, despite this sort of encounter, that uh, you could um, hear the evidence, be instructed as to the law, and remain impartial and deliberate in this case? Yes. All right. And then the question is, uh, is do you take any either positive or negative sort of feelings away from this encounter? Does it disturb you in any way? No. All right. Uh, Mr. Price? I don't have any questions, Ms. Hackett. Mr. Stegmeyer? Good afternoon, Ms. Callahan. Hi. Oh, Callahan. Uh, Callahan. Uh, what did you think when this happened? Any initial reaction? What was your initial reaction when this happened? Did you have any reaction to it at all? Well, when I heard someone speak, I didn't even look up. I was talking to these other jurors and facing this way. And okay. I, no, it was. Fair enough. Nothing. Um, are you still going to be able to uh, look at John as innocent until proven otherwise? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, Ms. Callahan, we're going to get Mr. Clay. Okay. All right. Clay. Judge, I found it. About what? Reading. There's another one. I was there, uh, have a seat here, Mr. Clay, if you would. Now, Mr. Clay, um, what I need to know is if, uh, if you believe that you have been approached, so you're now serving as a juror in the case of the Commonwealth versus Jonathan Masters, and I need to know if you believe that you may have been approached by someone who is somehow connected with this case. Okay, and when did that occur? Before we came in the courtroom the first time. The first time today? Yes. All right. All right. And uh, what sort of contact did you have with this person? Um, we were sitting down there waiting to come in, and the uh, uh, blonde-haired lady came up and just said oh, something to the effect that, well, I guess you're the jury, I'm the defendant's mother. Oh. Uh, did you uh, respond to her in any way? No. All right. To the best of your, I mean, is it? Is that every word that you believe, I mean, to the best of your knowledge, the exact words that she uh, said to you? Yes. All right. Okay. Um, um, having had this encounter, uh, have, do you, I need to know how you feel about it. Do you, have, do you have either a positive or a negative sort of response to that? I guess uh, somewhere in between. All right. So it's not entirely comfortable. Right. Uh, but I guess what I need to know is if you, today, now, whether you believe that you could continue uh, to serve as a juror in this case because you are still prepared to uh, listen to all of the evidence and uh, base your decision on the uh, testimony that you've heard uh, from the witness to chair and the uh, law that you'll be instructed yes i believe so okay and you don't and this encounter would not factor in your decision making at all no because we were told through the several uh board years that i've sat through that we were supposed to only make a decision on on what we heard what um testimony was given and what um rules of the law that the judge would tell us before we would deliberate. Okay. Uh, Mr. Price, do you have any 
Questions for Mr. Clay? Just one question, Mr. Clay. Can you elaborate on that? Just in between? Somewhere in between yes and no, the, the, if it would affect me or not. What do you mean when you say that, when you say somewhere in between? Me? It's just that um, we originally had just the faces in front of us, and then that was just another face that was brought kind of um, in and kind of in the back of my mind thinking about, you know, what maybe a mother would be thinking about her son going through the trial. Did it, did it, did it cause you to employ in your mind any sympathy for this defendant? No, more, it was more sympathy for the mother and what she's going through. Uh, Mr. Stegmaier. So Mr. Clayton? Uh, Clay. 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 Mr. Clay, good afternoon. Um, I'm not going to put you on the spot anymore. This has got to be a little difficult, but I understand that. I just need to make sure, um, are you still going to be able to view John as innocent until the burden of proof is met? Yeah, which is what all jurors should do. Good. All right. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Clay, if you would swing around. And, uh, Go back out with the other jurors. Yes, if you all would. Right, thank you. Okay. Any comments? Yeah, Judge, I do. I mean, I have a couple comments. First is that, I, 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 you know, first and foremost, I think this lady, I think Ms. Deaton needs to be admonished extremely harshly that she is not to have contact with this jury. And I say that, Judge, because I've studied this case like I've studied the back of my hand. So I know this is not the first jury trial she's gone through with her son. Okay. Okay. So I know she knows the rules. I know she knows the parameters. That's one. Two, just in getting back to this case itself, I'm a little bit concerned about Mr. Clay. And since we have seven, Judge, I think he ought to be our alternate because I think it sounds like from what I just heard, he, he's, he's now a little bit bothered by, by the fact that he can now put a face on the mother of the defendant and a voice. And, and I think he expressed that sympathy and, you know, he was the only one that said, you know, a little bit in between. Not, not unequivocally, this will not bother me, but I, you know, I mean, I, I think he ought to be our alternate judge. I think he ought to be excused. All right. Mr. Uh, Stegmeyer. I mean, short of a mistrial, of course. I got you. Do you have a comment, Mr. Stegmeyer? No, I'm, I'm fine, Your Honor. All right. I think, I think we're okay. Um, yeah, I think we, we really uh, dodged the bullet here because this could have been really bad. Um, I think what I'm going to need to do, uh, I, I'm, Mr. Clay uh, didn't really strike me as uh, particularly invested in either side of this. And part of it is everybody's got mothers, you know. You know, it's, it's not like he doesn't have a mother. And I, I just don't think, uh, you know, I, I, we have a little bit of time but I'm more inclined to just uh, randomly select our alternate, but we may talk about that again. Uh, but I do want to move forward. Now, Mr. Price, when we last left off, the plan is, best I can tell, you, got, you can talk to Mr. Um, Mr. Masters about whatever you want, but they're, you're gonna talk to him about, I can't remember what, I had it written down somewhere. Uh, the lawsuit. So I don't know how much, how much more time do you think you're going to spend with Mr. Masters there, uh, Mr. Price? Uh, probably about 15 more minutes, Judge. All right. All right, everybody ready to go? Yes, Your Honor. All right, sure. All right Judge, and you just, uh, I, well, the record is on. You know my objection to. Yeah, it's, it's been on nonstop. Still random. Okay. All right, Mr. Weathers, we're ready. Come on. Jury. 
All right. We're all present and accounted for. All right. Now, uh, Mr. Masters, I need you to come back up and uh, uh, have, a, have a seat. And again, you are still under oath. 